The queen, her gold carriage alone is made of four tons of solid gold, worth over three hundred and seventy billion dollars at today's gold prices. The Bank of England Nominees Limited was established to hide the queen's investments. Secrecy about her wealth protects her. Government and banking officials inform the queen about where to invest her wealth. That's called insider trading, and it's illegal. But the queen gets away with it scot-free. Why? Because she's the queen, and she's immune to prosecution. The queen owns more than 300 residences, including castles and palaces, crown jewels, over 27,000 masterpieces, prize racehorses, and a fleet of Bentleys and Rolls Royces. Her colossal wealth also includes crown land and investments that she inherited from her black nobility ancestors. The Queen's Crown estate includes over 50% of the UK's coastline, as well as Regent Street and Windsor Great Park. Her trillions in wealth are passed down to her descendants, untaxed. Would British tourism collapse if the monarchy was abolished? No, statistically. Buckingham Palace doesn't even make the top 20 list of tourist attractions. Do you know how much the Queen is worth? 17 trillion pounds. That's 30 trillion dollars. She could end world hunger and poverty tomorrow. Besides insider trading and tax-free income, the slave trade and drug trade. Queen Elizabeth I started the British slave trade in 1564. As head of the Church of England. Her slave trading of African blacks upset the moral foundations of the church. Queen Elizabeth II is now head of the Church of England. Two hundred years after the slave trade was abolished, the church was pressured into confessing its horrific crimes and apologizing for profiting from the African slave trade. At first, the queen and the church only admitted to owning slaves and plantations. But the public soon discovered that the church had given their blessing to something far worse. The church had approved the beating, mutilation, rape, kidnapping, and murder of tens of millions of Africans by declaring that Africans had no soul. This gave the church a divine license to profit from their diabolical crimes. Even more lucrative than Queen Elizabeth's slave trade was Queen Victoria's drug trade. Opium was grown and manufactured in the British-owned opium factories of British India. China banned the importation of opium, but once the British monarch secured a drug trade monopoly, over 17,000 illegal chests of opium worth millions were forced onto the Chinese population. The British waged three drug wars on China to force them to pay for the illegally imported opium. China's emperor didn't stand a chance against the British East India Company gunboats and Royal Navy. The British destroyed, plundered, looted, and raped their way along the coast of China until there was nothing left to loot or plunder. On August 29, 1842, the Treaty of Nanking forced the Chinese government to pay 15 million pounds to the British merchants to open up its ports to opium trade. And to cede Hong Kong to the British, this was the ugly origin of Hong Kong's 155 years as a stolen British Crown colony. There are people who believe that they have a God-given right to rule over others. They believe that their outward appearance is superior to all others. They harbor selfish ambitions to be rich. And to have power over what they describe as common people, they lie, cheat, steal, strangle, stab, and slash their way to power. They believe that their actual willpower, what the British occultist Alistair Crowley described as the will of Thelema, the royal will. Must be obeyed. Literally millions of people have been slaughtered at the behest of the royal lust for war, and thousands of people have been assassinated so that demonic dukes and killer queens can reign supreme.